He said, fear not, for I bring to you the glad tidings of great joy. The Savior is born to you this very day. You will find him wrapped in a blanket on a bed of hay in the town of Bethlehem. They sing glory to God in the highest. Peace on the earth, good will to good men. The Savior's Lord is mine, saves people from their sins in the town of Bethlehem. Well, the scene stopped and we looked around and we found ourselves alone. I asked if I had been dreaming, my friends told me I'd tell you no. We heard and saw it all, and we know what we've got to do. But there isn't any more that we can say. Let's prepare ourselves and then be on our way. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem. What kind of song was that? What kind of song was it? Christmas. Yeah, it was a Christmas song. The one I wrote. It's called Let's Go to Bethlehem. It took me, and there was a couple of songs that took me a long time to write. That was in like 20 minutes. Like I must have been really inspired that day. <laughs> you know, sitting at the piano saying, wow, you know, or something like that. Uh, sometimes I do get those uh, inspirations. This is a a hymn that I uh, revised, it's also from the CD. When upon life's wings, you are tempest-tossed. When you feel discouraged, thinking all is lost, counting your many blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God's over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort you. To the journey's end, God your blessings, name one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. God your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Sometimes we don't count our blessings. Sometimes we think about all the negative things that happen to us. But you know, that all depends on where you're focused. If you're looking at the world all the time, yeah, you're going to see a lot of negative stuff. But if you're going to have your eyes on Jesus, he's going to help me get through all that. You're going to say, yes, there is still some good things in the world because there's Jesus Christ. And uh, he helps us to find uh, good things in the world. This is an old God the Holler Gospel song that we used to sing down in Charleston, West Virginia. It's called Life's Railway to Heaven. 
songs that, uh, that I heard when I was a kid, and that was one of them, and this is another one that was on that album that my parents kept around. So parents, grandparents, keep playing the Christian songs in the house. You know, if the kids look at you like, no, man, that's you, don't pay attention to them. Because sometimes that's what we say about things in the Bible. We say, oh, man, that again? You know? But it's true. we we got to keep repeating and and repeating and repeating things so that we'll do them. But this is another song off of that old album. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from the light of the Lord but to us he gives the keeping of the night of the soul. Let all the be mine. Send the Oh, 
and one of my alpha holler buddies down in Charleston said, yeah, load up the brain before shooting off the mouth. That's easy to remember. We really, you know, we've got we to gotta think about our conduct and what we're saying to people and how we're saying things to people. That's Christianity. That, you know, if you didn't have Christ, you wouldn't have any boundaries. You could just go ahead and run your mouth and say what you want. But if you're in Christ, he's your king. And you, it is, you know, you got boundaries there. We better, you know, we better start acting. All right, I'm going to do a song that we did last night. It's on the subject that I've been talking about. It's called Do What's Right. <laughs> I want to do, 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 do what's right. I want to do, do, do what's right. I want to do, do, do what's right. Got my hunger and thirst for righteousness. I want to do, 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 do what's right. I want to do, do, do what's right. I want to do, do, do what's right. Got my hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus said I will be blessed if I live in His word. Say what's right. I want to say, say, 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 say what's right. I want to be blessed if I live in this world. I want to be blessed if I live in this world. Live just right. I want to live, live, 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 live just right. I want do what's right. I want to do, do, 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 do what's right. Well, I'm going to do two more songs, no matter what time it is, because, of, well, yes, I better just do this one. What's that? Okay, go for it. All right, could you put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee, and then I'm going to do my closing song, okay? You can clap your hands to this one, too. Put your hand in the hand of a man to save his life. Put your hand in the hand of a man to come to see. Put your hand in the hand of a man to save his life. Put your hand in the hand of a man to save his life. Put your hand in the hand of a man to save his life. Put your hand in the hand of a man to save his life. Put your hand in the hand of a man to save his life. Put your hand in the hand of a man to save his life. Every time I look into the holy book, I want to go to the holy book. And I read about the part of the book, I want to go to the holy book. And the Bible says, I don't know what I'm going to do. And the Bible says, I don't know what I'm going to do. And the Bible says, I don't know what I'm going to do. Now put your hand in the hand of a man to save the water. Put your hand in the hand of a man to fall on the sea. Take it in the back, so funny you can't let go. Do it. Put your hand in the hand of a man to fall on the sea. Yeah. For my last song on my concert, 
It's not my last song in the evenings. Last song on the concert. No, I gotta do this one. I gotta do this one. Maybe we'll do Jesse during the song, the service. But I have, our son Alan passed away on October the 8th, 2011. And uh, I played this song at his memorial service because this was his favorite song that I did. And I've been closing my concerts with this song for a while. So here's Alan's favorite song, Swing Low, Sweet Cherry. Swing low, sweet cherry, come for me. Oh, swing low, sweet cherry. Well, I went What did I see? I Thank you. 
Can we just start and then we sing together? His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He is a mighty master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He's a great shepherd. Oh, 
Yes, we do. Bible, 
of the man of God may be thoroughly uh, equipped for every good work. The Word of God in the words of God. That's the Bible. So if the Bible is God's Word, and it's God breathed, and God made it, then why do all these modern, man made modern theologies take precedence after the giving of the Word? Why do they take precedence over the Word? These things were all made up before the Bible, or after the Bible was written. And so why do they take precedence? According to the scriptures, the church started out this way. The church began on the day of Pentecost. A Jewish bee celebrated, celebrating harvest. The Holy Spirit came down on the, uh, on the house where the apostles were staying. They said it was like a mighty rushing wind, and there was tongues of fire resting on them. And they came out, and they proclaimed to the people that Jesus is the Christ. And there were many, 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 many people in town for the feast. You know, a lot of the Jews used to come in for all those festivals. And there were lots of people in town. This is in Acts 2, okay, where we are. And there were all, and there were Jews from every nation in town for this feast. So the Lord enabled the apostles to speak languages they never learned before. Now, why would that be? Well, because there were all these people from all these Jews from all these different countries that spoke all these different languages that needed to know the gospel. And so God gave them, the apostles, by the Holy Spirit, the ability to, teach, uh, to speak languages that they had not learned so that all these people could hear the good news. So Peter preached a sermon on that day. It was the first sermon from the New Covenant. Remember, there's been a covenant change. Remember when the, the temple, the veil of the temple was torn and there was an earthquake and the veil was torn and uh, the, the covenant, Jesus died and was buried and he, and he rose again and he, when he uh, came out uh, after 40 days of being on earth, he gave the apostles the instructions for the new covenant, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm, surely I am with you through the end of the world. But then in Mark 16, 16, it says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. So Peter followed up on that sermon, he told the Jews that they were responsible for the death of Jesus, that they killed him on a cross, and that they were responsible for killing their own Messiah, and they were alarmed, and they said, be assured of this, that this Jesus that you crucified, God has made Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said, uh, uh, said to Peter, and said, what shall we do? What shall we do? And Peter gave the first orders of the new covenant. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the promise is to you and to your children and those who are afar off. That's up. Those who are afar off. Later on, the Gentiles. These were all Jews. These were all Jews. And come to these people. And 3,000 people responded. He says, And those that received his word were baptized, and there were numbered about 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. Now, we've made up other things to say. We say differently. When you listen to Christian programming on TV and someone wants to know what to do to be saved, what do they tell you? They tell you, Receive Christ. In your heart and say the sinner's prayer and your sins will be forgiven. Now, again, you know, like I say, I want the scriptures to speak to us. Remember what we just read? What Peter said? Now we're saying all this other stuff. Again, the first order was Acts 2. So let's follow that. Forgiveness of sin is there, and the gift of the Holy Spirit is there. The sinner's prayer is not there. So, you know, we need to go back and look at the scriptures, and we learn 
like I said on Sunday morning from the scripture, by command and by example. And what we have to ask ourselves is, are these things commanded to do? There are some things that are commanded, and there's examples of how to do it in the scripture. Now let's set the scene. Let's go to Acts 16. This is a very popular uh, scripture when it comes to the plan of salvation. So in Acts 16, Paul and Silas had been put in jail for preaching the word. That was kind of normal back then. Have you ever had, heard of anybody in Hopedale or Cass or Stewville being put in jail for preaching the word? I think if if we did, some of us might, you know, we might get put in jail because people were very offended by the preaching by the word. Anyway, they, they sang hymns at midnight. An earthquake came, shook the foundations of the prison, and every and everybody's chains fell off. All the prisoners' chains fell off. The jailer, thinking that everyone was uh, has escaped, uh, tried to kill himself. You know why? Because back then, if you were a jailer and your prisoner escaped, you were executed immediately. They took you out and killed you. So he. Tried to kill himself because he figured, well, I'm done anyway. But Paul said, no, no, we're all here. They rushed in with lights and said, we're all here. We're, everybody's here. And the jailer said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You and all your house. According to modern theology, that's where the story ends. Yeah, they just stopped right there. The jailer saved and, well, we don't really know what happened, but because they don't read verses 32 and 33, because those verses don't, read, don't fit their belief system. Okay, they don't read it because it doesn't make sense to them that they would respond to that with baptism. But there's a little check here, okay, because there's a little verse, I believe it's 32. Where, the Bible, where he says, then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the all his brothers in his house. All the others. Sorry. They spoke the word of the Lord to him. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. So they spoke the word of the Lord to them and to all the others in his house. I am sure that included in the speaking of the word of the Lord to them was Acts 2. Yeah. They wouldn't leave it out because that's part of the scripture. So they had to go back and they had to go to the foundation and they had to say, you know, Taylor, yeah, you need to believe that Jesus is the Christ and he need to repent and be baptized. And his repentance was shown by when he watched those guys wounds because he tried to help beat them up. And he, his repentance was shown by when he washed their wounds. And then the response makes sense because Paul quote, spoke the word of the Lord to them and saved the credibility of the scriptures because he put it all together. And the response makes sense. Are you following me? Okay. When we talk to people about salvation, it, it answers a lot more questions than just receive Jesus in your heart and say a prayer and your sins are forgiven. The Acts 2, yeah, Acts 2 answers the question where your sins are forgiven. What must well, we answer the question, what must I do? It answers the question. When are our sins forgiven? In Acts 2, it says, Repent and be baptized, everyone in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, how's that go? It goes repentance. Well, of course, they believe it goes repentance, baptism, forgiveness of sin, gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the order of the scripture. So it answers those questions, but those other plans do not answer those questions. They don't tell you. When your sins are forgiven, they don't tell you when. Because there's a lot of people around saying, How do we know we get the Holy Spirit? 
You know, and some people say, well, I, I felt something, or I, I saw something, or whatever. I got chills or something, and all this stuff. But the Bible says that you get the Holy Spirit at when you believe in Jesus the Christ, and you repent of sin, you are baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of those sins, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's all there. It's all very simple. The foundation of salvation is built from Acts 2 up. You have to put Acts 2 as the bottom block and then put all those other things on top of Acts 2 because that's the foundation. We can't use Romans 10, 9, and 10 without referring to Acts 2. We can't just say, you know, and, and people will say, well, if you accept Jesus in your heart and believe that uh, he's, uh, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And they just Use that first right there. But they can't, that's like putting down another foundation, a foundational block and trying to build one. But Acts 2 and everything preceding and all the examples, if you look in the book of Acts, we have like eight or nine examples of conversion. And if you look at all of those examples of conversion, everything is involved in it. Belief, repentance, baptism, forgiveness of sins. It's like you can't bake a cake and not leave out one of the ingredients. Somebody put it that simply one time. If you leave out the eggs, or if you leave out the baking powder, the cake's going to be flat. And my mom used to tell me that if I jump while the cake was in the oven, if I jumped on the floor, that it would flatten the cake out. I never understood that. I didn't step on the cakes. How did it flatten the cake out? But they told me that time and time again, so I never jumped on the floor when the cake was So we can't just say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and leave it right there. We can't just use Acts 6, 6, 16, 31 without referring back to Acts 2 and all the examples that are given to us. If we do this, if we don't use Acts 2, both, both repentance and baptism, make no sense. Because if all you have to do is believe in the story should be out, they shouldn't have put 32 and 33 in there. The reason they did is because of all the preceding verses and examples. And we can look at Romans 10, 9, and 10, and people, like I said, see, we don't have to be baptized. It isn't mentioned there. <coughs> but it is in Acts 2 and all the examples. And see, mm -hmm. repentance, we don't have to repent. That's not mentioned there either. You know, and they say, well, by grace you have been saved through faith. That, that doesn't mention repentance, but there are a lot of other things that do. Acts 17, 30 mentions repentance. So, what, uh, you know, you have to be careful to keep the plan together. Keep the Bible together. And if you do that, then it'll make sense to people. These Modern plans have just broken it up. They've taken verses just by themselves and tell you that all you need to do without referring to preceding verses in Scripture and making the whole thing make sense. Just picture Acts 2 as the foundational block and all those examples on 2nd and 3rd and 4th, like Cornelius and, and Saul of Tarsus and the Uni, and all those are blocks. Uh, on that, and then we can put the vibration, have been saved through faith, and it comes up and put it further up, and you have the whole thing built together in the end. You need Acts 2, you need Acts 8, and Acts 9, and Acts 10, and Acts 16.31, and Acts 18.8, and Romans a 6, 1 to 6, and Romans 10, 9, and 10, everything together makes the plan make sense. And if you take the foundation out, anything goes. You ever put a foundation down to build, uh, to build a building and then somebody tries to build another one on top of it? Instead of one foundation, they try to put two or three on there. And it just doesn't make sense. 
Thanks. All work together. It's 2 a, uh, Ephesians 2 8 9, my grace, you have been saved through faith. Yep, that's true. The faith and obedience cannot be separated. And one must obey God in order to be assured of salvation. Obey all the God, all the examples. Now, um, they, uh, let's see, I, I think I've done enough about the foundation now. Um, but we, there's only one, it's already been laid. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ means believing everything, read everything that's in the scripture. Matthew 28, 19, 20, Mark 16, 16, Acts 2, uh, 38, uh, 19, I mean 9, 19, Acts 16, 31, Romans uh, 3, 23, that's the uh, all of sin, all sort of the word of God. R uh, Romans 6, uh, 1 to 6, have you believe that uh, you who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death, you were buried only in my baptism. You don't want to leave that out. Acts, uh, I meant it, Acts 9, 19. Acts 22, 16, where they told Paul, rise and be baptized. Uh, and Peter's verse in in 1 Peter 3, 21 makes sense when he says baptism, uh, therefore saves you, not with the washing of water, but for a clear conscience for God. But it makes sense because it refers back to everything else. Everything else. Everything else. Of repentance and, and everything, forgiveness of sin, and the Holy Spirit. So, using uh, any verse by itself, I don't want to ramble here. I want to make sure that uh, you got everybody understands that if we leave all these questions unanswered by these modern plans, it leaves the Bible open to ridicule. And for lack of continuity. And if we, if we keep it together, it's going to make sense for people. Questions are going to be answered properly. And the Bible will, together, <laughs> make sense. You know, when you ask the question, when are our sins forgiven? After we repent, believe, repent, and be baptized. That's when our sins are forgiven. We thought that's the word of the scripture. How do we get the Holy Spirit? Believe, repent, be baptized into Christ for forgiveness of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can answer that. If you know it, you can answer it. And a lot of people, you know, they think it's really controversial. When was Paul saved? Was he saved on the road when he had an encounter with Christ? Or was he saved after he got to Damascus? Well, just look at the scripture. One, he had his encounter with Christ. And he said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he says, Lord, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom you're persecuting. Now go into the city, and you will be told what to do. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything about it being, he, Paul didn't even know the gospel. He just had an encounter with Jesus. That's the whole lot. He didn't know what he was supposed to do. And so God sent Ananias to him. And when he got to the town, he was there for, for three days, and Ananias came and he instructed him. In Acts 22, 16, Ananias told him, Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And he did it. So he was saved. And he got forgiveness of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit after he did everything. Not just by a chance encounter. So there's nothing really controversial about that. There are just so many modern theologies floating around. And so many people who think that things are a certain way. But the Bible is clear. If we would just take off our preconceived opinions and notions and look at the scripture and let the scriptures speak for themselves we would find out that what we need to do makes sense if you're not a Christian tonight 
I have gone through all the scriptures. I have given you the examples. If you want to read about the conversion of Cornelius and Saul and Munich and Simon the sorcerer and Lydia and the jailer, all those conversions, read them all and read what they said in Acts that Corinthians did in Acts 18. And then do it. Go and follow the example of the Spirit. Believe in Jesus as the Christ. Repent of your sin. Turn away. Turn a different direction. Be baptized into Christ. The forgiveness of your sin. And you will see the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not steps, it's just the whole thing. It's the whole thing. Now we're going to sing it. Hymn of Invitation tonight. And it's going to be Bible Things and Bible Way. Because that's what we want to do. We want to be sure. If somebody asks you, Are you going to heaven? Are you saved? You can say, Yes, I am. I've done, I've obeyed the gospel, and I'm attempting to live a life worthy of the promise of Christ. So let's stand up and try to sing this song, right? Come to the God of the Bible. Forget about all the things that you've heard. Here with the God of the Bible. There's a shelter from the chatter of man's words. I came to the God of the Bible. I was tired of running man's foolish ways. Here with the God of the Bible. I learned about the salvation Jesus prayed. I'll do it by the things in my way. I'll do it by the things by the Bible prayers. That we all may be born. To the God of the Bible. He is the way to the Bible. And here is the God of the Bible. It's a stranger away to eternal life. To the Bible, in Bible, 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 by
There used to be another product that's written on American divorce. They used to leave out some of the verses on that because that didn't read the verse as well. It didn't read very well. It didn't read the Greek name. And uh, I struggled with that for several years. I purposely would avoid certain scriptures on American divorce. When I spoke with people on that topic, I was unable to maintain eye contact because I knew I was not speaking to them. When I finally said to the other preacher, being inspired by the word of God, I changed my beliefs to come to the God. Now I can look you dead in the eye on that topic as well. So do they agree with me? It was important to be free to God. So God bless you as you go forth this week and uh, get a chance to see Marvin here uh, in the men's afterwards to uh, kind of let him know your appreciation for those the messages he brought. Brother, a lot of good news. We got more occasions now. Uh, our relationship with Christ is all the same with us in the eternity. I know that, but I just need to hear that again. And about the repentance thing, the repentance is everything. That's important. We can always see that. But this is an excellent message, I wrote. This is an excellent message on the necessity to rightly divide the word of truth. Because if we don't, if we don't rightly divide the message, if we don't include all the scriptures in our message on a particular topic, then we cannot claim to be speaking truth. Let's keep studying the Bible, right? Because here's a fellow that doesn't have sight like we have. He studied it. You know? Here we have sight that we can read. It. So keep studying the good book. The good book will be known. Friday night, the Union Court Homecoming begins. I think we've got some free service activities starting up here at 6 o'clock. I think free for him are singing on Friday. And we've got some other things going on Saturday. Marvin singing. Marvin singing. What's that? Marvin singing at 6 on Saturday. Okay, 6 on Saturday. Oh, the awesome. The awesome. The awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a o'clock on Sunday. Oh, that'd be Sunday. Okay, great. Uh, you know what, folks? Somebody want to go over and join on Sunday morning? Who's preaching Sunday morning? Marvin preaching. <laughs> <laughs> and since my son and I have been preaching on Friday and Saturday, and then I'll be adding on Sunday. He's not a big one. He's not a big one. He's a big one. Well, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> So listen, since half of our number apparently went to Eden Court back in 1830, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few of you head that way Sunday morning, be blessed. Why don't you the Lord's table for those people? Thanks for being a part of this morning. Father, it is an honor to be with these believers tonight, to be a part of your kingdom and to be included. Thank you for including us, Lord. Not just the Jews, only the Gentiles as well. Father, as we reach out, Lord, may our hearts be like yours, wanting to include all, so that when we come to Christ, Christ's life. We pray, Lord, they will, through our words and our example, our efforts. So, Lord, as we plant the seed and water and last week, give me, give me increase, please. And we'll be sure to give all the glory right back to you for everything. We know the Lord wants in Jesus' name. Doing Bible things in Bible things, finding Bible things by my hand. Doing things in Bible things, finding 